Hello, everyone. I hope you had a great weekend. Clearly, the stock market did as we come into today. Now, before we get too, too much into this, so uh, today, as you can see on the New York Stock Exchange, volume shows here higher, but it's lower on the NASDAQ. However, on MarketSmith, it sells volume on the NYSC and S&P 500 lower than the day before. But once again, not much difference from a day-to-day -day basis, so it's like splitting hair. So right now, this market for the S&P 500 is still trapped between those September highs and those August lows. This is an excellent move off the retest lows, but unfortunately, everybody, these are not the kind of volume characteristics you see out there for a good bottom. Now, while I said that I see a lot of stocks that are giving that rounding out pattern, and while WFM's volume is fine, there are too many stocks that kind of look like Netflix. So Netflix, I love this pattern, was hoping it would give me a pocket pivot point signal today and a buy signal. And while it didn't do it on Friday, its sector chart is in my perfect speculator scan for music and video stores, and it produced a pocket pivot point. But it, I didn't take it based off that signal, but I could have because Netflix was up 4% today, so I kind of feel like an asshole for not taking the signal in a stock that I really like. Netflix and Amazon are my two favorite big cap tech stocks by far, by far. So, kind of unfortunate, but once again, I didn't get a pocket pivot point signal, so... You know, I'm not taking this signal, but this is a 50-day moving average retake and a great stock. You can use today's low a day as a cut loss. But I'm trying to stay completely disciplined here, and I think that if we were ready to really rock it higher without a, another potential pullback, not only would Netflix have broken out higher, but if you look at the bottom panel of the screen, that BOP would have continued to, to rise and not now be slowly trending lower. But there's just too many patterns out there where the left side is full of distribution and the right side is full of no accumulation. Amazon, same similar situation. You look at Facebook and you see a very ugly pattern. But once again, do the green bars beat the big red bars? No. So unfortunately, a lot of these rounding patterns, they have problems. I love stocks like MFLX. I wish there were more MFLX looking charts out there. Let me see if I, in HTC even, you know, look at its right side. Look at the volume on the right side. This is this stock has a higher chance of failing out at those old June, July resistance levels than continue moving higher. However, that being said, there are still some good stocks like yeah, I'm putting up here like LOGM, EURN. It's got some accumulation in it, but I mean, there's just... There's just too many red stocks like ORLY where it's just not convincing enough. So while we're looking at some good, you know, potential rounding out bottoming patterns, another unfortunate thing about this is that a lot of them are in defensive sectors. Look at Dow Chemical. Look at Alcoa. Metals and mining, chemicals. Look at EGO, a gold stock. Look at SSRI, a silver stock. So you got oil stocks like BXE and a lot of other ones, XOP. So oil stocks look good. Gold stocks starting to look good. Silver stocks starting to look good. And chemical stocks are starting to look good. So like Dow Chemicals. So these are not the kind of industry groups. Oh, yeah, and REITs. Look at w RWR. So RWR, oil, gold, silver chemical stocks. Don't forget one of my best new long signals, BCO. It's a defensive industry because it's security and protection services. Something services is what you always need, no matter what kind of market it is. So I have the wrong kind of leaderships that are indicative of a powerful rally starting. So while there are indications of a potential uptrend, we have some issues in that the leadership looks a little defensive. So I'm still out on this rally attempt. I'm glad that it's happening. Our longs are looking good. Look at what our speculative long position did this weekend. APDN was given to uh, Platinum uh, subscribers, those that watch the video, those that check the video section. You got this one. It was a 1% long position, a bigger than normal position for a spec stock in this kind of tape under a sell signal because it was in both BOP scans and made the price volume BOP scan. So three scans, um, all great to see. Boom. 13.82% gains today, up almost 15% at one point intraday. Not too shabby. So all of our new long positions continue to work. And that goes then to even say on a stock like U-Haul, which was a recent ad, and BNCN, which is a recent ad, once again, they are another. They are ads all over again. 
So BNCN is giving another ad signal, another pocket pivot point signal. What don't I like about the stock? Obviously, volume was only slightly above average, and BOP is going in the wrong day, but it's still a strong green. Stock could still do well, and even if I'm wrong, adding another 1% to this position, which, by the way, I was shaking out of some of it on Friday, re-put it back on today as it crossed above 22.46, got filled at 22.45. Thanks, IB. You gave me a good fill for once. Um, but it is also now another ad signal. So I'm going to add 1%. BNCN was not confirmed anywhere else. So BNCN, 1% ad signal. I'm increasing it only because it's so good and I risk so little. Normally it would be 0.5%, but to know that I'm wrong, I risk 3% max. So I got to go ahead and push it here in case the market wants to keep on rallying. And by push it, I mean I'm being very loose with that term. Same thing with UHAL. Huge volume surge today. BOP surged back to that nice tall green BOP that it was having earlier. And, you know, it's pretty good. It's not a pocket pivot point signal, but it just missed being a pocket pivot point signal. So I'm going to kind of call it one. So it's a can slim quality stock with a huge volume surge and a BOP surge. And once again, I don't risk much to know that I'm wrong. So on this signal here, I'm going to be using the 390.52 low a day. And if you want to split it up, you could use the 390.52 or 392.10 and then ultimately 386. So the most you're going to lose is ten is ten dollars per share. If you get ten shares, it's only a hundred dollar loss on a large account. Not too bad for the potential gains it can make. This one could easily shoot up to four fifty five hundred if the market wants to work in its favor. But U-Haul and BNCN, unfortunately, those were the best two technical patterns this evening. Those are by far the best two long signals this evening, and neither one are that great. Now, did I have any new long signals? Unfortunately, I only had one. I flagged NCS, <laughs> not good enough, as you can see. Flagged MFLX, not good enough. Flagged Hawaiian Holdings, but look at the volume and the overall pattern, not good enough. And then the only stock that I decided to go long was CTB. Why? Because it looks like that this got most of the sellers shaken out here. It looks like they moved it down to new lows on no volume. And the difference between this chart and some, most of those other charts is the right side has some tall green bars and only a few tall red bars. One, two, three, four to be exact, with a lot more tall green bars, including today's pocket pivot point signal right off a strong support level with the 50-day moving average and 200-day moving average trending higher. So the first cut loss on half the position, 38.78. The final cut loss, 37.88. So you only risk $2 per share on this position. So CTB, can some quality stock. It was confirmed in the price volume BOP scan. So it is going to be 2%. It would normally be 1.5%. But like I said, I want to go with, since I'm so under cap, I mean, not undercapitalized, but since I'm so under invested here on the long side and I've triggered more shorts, we're looking at, I'm easily in between 85 to 90% cash now. Now, it's got to be more 85%, but out of the 85%, I got to be like 12, 11% long, 4%, 3% sure. I'm not quite sure, but I know that still cash is huge. So if the market's going to move, I need to start putting some money to work in stocks that I'm not going to risk much on if I'm wrong. So CTB, 2%, BNC in 1%, and U-Haul, 1%, and also some cleaning up to do. SRTY is giving a 50% sell signal by closing below the 20-day moving average. DXD, another 50% sell signal closing below the 50. And TVIX, another 50% closing below the 50-day moving average. You should not, and I do not, have much of those shares left. But, you know, there are still the main action. It's intraday, CTRV. This damn thing broke out at 385 in the morning. That's when it took out its morning highs, and the thing ran all the way up to 628 today. So you could have almost have doubled your money from the early morning breakout. Everybody on every day trading chat room was on it. This was the big one of the day because of the huge morning volume. And I tell you what, man, living on Maui is just hellacious because I'm missing out on plays like this, just trying to live a normal life. But I tell you what, intraday continues to be where all the big money is being made on an end-of-day basis. Still got to take it easy. Be careful. The market is still range-bound. I am definitely not bullish and quite convinced yet of this move. Going to need some more time. Got a couple more weeks seasonally before we get out of a historically bad period.